It's 4 p.m. and we're bringing you the developing news and the stories behind the headlines. This is Storycon. I'm Patrick Pais. Some stories we're watching this Friday, May 31. The health department confirms the country's first death related to e-cigarettes or vape. Philippine General Hospital doctors documented a 22-year-old male who had a fatal heart attack despite having no prior health issues. He had a lung injury which doctors attributed to his daily vape use. The DOH again reminds everyone that vaping is not a safe alternative to smoking. Today is National Fisher Folks Day to highlight the significance of the annual observance. A group of fishermen went on a collective expedition in Masinloc, Zambales. This is to protest China's fishing ban in the areas of the West Philippine Sea. And in, and in the United States, former President Donald Trump is found guilty of falsifying documents to cover up a hush money for a porn star. Trump's sentencing is set for July 11, or four days before the Republican Party's nomination for the November elections. The former president could face up to four years in prison if his conviction is upheld. Former President Donald Trump has been convicted in his hush money trial in New York City. This is a really significant moment. It's the first time in history that a former American president has been convicted in a criminal trial of felony charges. This is a moment that's going to matter both legally and politically. Legally, these are 34 felony charges that carry four years in prison, although it's not known whether prosecutors are going to seek any prison time or whether the judge is going to impose any prison time. Politically, the implications remain to be seen, but there's no question that Trump is going to clearly try to rally his base and to try to get voters and his supporters to believe that this is a case of political persecution, as he has long maintained. But it's also possible that American voters are going to be turned off by the idea of electing a, a candidate who is now a convicted felon. This case has been unfolding for months. It concerns hush money payments, the prosecutors say, were made to a porn actor who alleged that she had an extramarital sexual encounter with Trump a decade before the 2016 presidential election. And prosecutors say Stormy Daniels was paid to keep quiet and to prevent those claims of a sexual relationship from surfacing during the final days of the 2016 presidential election. And the allegations here were that Trump falsified business records to prevent the true nature of those payments from being revealed. Joining us today, Ana Marie Pamintuan, Editor-in-Chief of the Philippine Star and StoryCon's resident political pundit, Ronald Yamas. Happy weekend, Hi, happy Ami. Friday. Happy weekend at saka happy uh, month and... <laughs> okay. ha happy birthday kay BP Sara. Yon, ah, okay. birthday pala. We will, before we continue on the birthday greetings, so now, let's jump right in to our mobile journalist who, has, who is in Singapore. Uh, for the Shangri-La Dialogue, where President Bongbong Marcus is scheduled to deliver the keynote address. Mobile journalist uh, Julie, Julie, yes, has the President already delivered his speech? Patrick Ronald and Annie, uh, around 8 p.m. pa yung uh, mismo na uh, keynote hmm. speech ng Pangulo, 7.25 pa magbubukas ng opisal ito nga IASF. Sangrila Dialogue. Nandito tayo ngayon sa loob ng Sangrila. Kakapasok lang natin actually ilang oras na bago yung pagbubukas. Medyo mahigpit. Sobrang higpit nung uh, security kasi sa labas pa lang. Hinabot na tayo halos ng 20 minutes bago nakapasok. And then, dito yung allotted space lang for the media delegation na gusto bumunta. Nakilip natin kanina yung uh, loob. So, medyo nag, ano, bali nagsasagawa uh, pa sila ng content preparation. Ang mga nakikita pa lang natin na dumating dito yung defense officials ng uh, ibang mga bansa sa atin sa Pilipinas, si Senator Jingoy Estrada lang yung nakasulubong natin kanina. No? Pero hindi natin siya nakausap kasi ang sabi niya, sasamahan pa daw na yung Pangulo sa bilateral meeting kay former Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong. Kasi uh, mayroon pang dalawang bilateral meeting si Pangulong Bongbong Marcos no? ngayong okay, hapon Julie? sa kay former <clears throat> Prime Minister. And then yung isa nga ay sa Lithuanian President. Okay, Julie, do we know, uh, do, do we have any inkling of what the president is going to say in his keynote speech? Uh, do, we have, do we have any clue? Sa ngayon, wala pa rin nagsasalita, ano? even the defense officials. 
si sa, sa part nila Secretary Gibotodoro and yung other military officials na nandito so pag itinatanong natin saan sa sentro yung na uh, Ah, uh, yung magiging speech ng pangulo ang ang sagot nila parating vaguely it's defense and uh, security. Pero ang 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 tip that we received from last night, meron daw mga policy uh, related na um sasabihin ng pangulo. Um, policy related Julie, na sasabihin. Na, okay. There's a meeting with the Singapore, the new Singapore Prime Minister. Alam na ba natin kung kung ano kung anong nangyari o mangyayari pa lang? Mm -mm. Kanina nagpulo nga sila bandang uh, 12 and uh, to 12.30. No? Supposedly, meron ng uh, lunch, hosted lunch for the President and the uh, First Lady Liga Arenta Marcos, pero hindi daw natuloy. Ngayon, hinihintay natin kung uh, ano yung napag-usapan nila kasi yung naibigay sa atin material pa lang. Hindi rin masyado malinaw yung audio nung uh, naging meeting kasi ang full coverage lang actually sa so mga crew lang yung uh, nakasama. So, we're, we're waiting si Secretary Seloy na ako naman sa na magbibigay ng update as soon as possible. Julie, okay. sa... Julie kahapon, the entire day, wala tayong ano, kung, may report ba kayo? Wal, walang, walang official schedule? Alam na ba natin? Private, kung... meetings, private meetings lang talaga yung uh, sinabi sa amin. Nagkaroon din kasi kami ng uh, dinner with Secretary Katabi and again, yun lang din yung sinabi niya sa amin, private meetings. Hindi rin siya nagsabi kung anong sector or uh, anong sino yung mga hmm. nakausap ng Pangulo doon sa meeting niya. Hindi nga natin alam actually kung ilan yung private meetings na uh, hmm. Okay, Julie, I understand that there was an opportunity yesterday or last night to to ambush or throw some questions to the president. Uh, may nangyari bang ganon na ambush interview sa presidente kagabi? Wala si presidente doon sa dinner actually. Yeah, PCO officers lang yung uh, nakasama natin. Even si house speaker from Walgis na supposedly ay nag-confirm nung una or akala natin mga kasama natin, hindi rin kasi sa nakasama sa dinner. Okay. Kasi tinatanong ko yung schedule ka hapon, Julie, kasi may mga speculation nga. Alam mo naman dito, lagi may mga ganyan, kapag ganyan, medyo parang sinisikreto kung ano nangyayari. May kumakalat na baka daw nag, nagkaroon ng health issue si Presidente at ano, nagpapacheck up actually dyan sa Singapore. Saan ba kayo nababalitaan na noon? <laughs> sa totoo lang, itong, or, ang Philippine media delegation dito, no, hindi pa namin nakakita ang Pangulo. Simula nung dumating siya. Kasi nung yung arrival niya nung Tuesday, 5 p.m. or around 4.52, um, close in din siya. And then ginabukasan hmm. yesterday, private meetings nga. And uh, hindi rin kami nakatanggap ng any photos from or updates from that uh, meeting. So ngayon, hmm. ngayon pa lang namin sa makikita kapag dumating siya sa, uh, sa dito para sa Sangrila Dialogue. Pero kanina naman, Based on doon sa mga materials na nakita natin, ano, uh, okay naman, uh, he is well. Um, Nakapag-meeting naman siya with uh, President Sarman and Prime Minister Wong. Uh, Julie, hmm. marami kang uh, kinover na ganyang klase mga visits ng Presidente. Bakit napaka-tight nung kanilang uh, paghawak sa trip na ito? Eh, hindi naman ito ganun ka-defining na trip, di ba? Bakit walang uh, binibigay na schedules no, ng mga meetings? Bakit walang patikim dun sa speech? No? At bakit uh, hindi nyo siya maabot masyado? Uh, iba ba iba ba to dun sa mga iba mong kinover? Usually kasi yung previous uh, coverages na napuntahan natin, nakasampa tayo sa PR001. So directly, pag, ano, pagbaba natin, uh, nakakasama tayo sa schedule ng Pangulo kung ano yung mga meetings niya. Pero ngayon kasi, since yung media delegation na nauna dito ng uh, a day or two, almost two days din na nauna sa Pangulo, so hindi hindi talaga natin na kumbaga, walang pagkakataon na makasama sa kaagad. Dati kasi kapag ka, sa presidential plane, of course, itakaroon ng mga ambush interview doon sa presidential plane. Um, and then, da, ganun din kapag uh, pauwi, nagtakaroon ng kapihan. So ngayon talagang naka-separate ng uh, hotel room, naka uh, medyo malayo with us. So kung mag-host lang yung mga officials natin ng uh, dinner, kung mag-set lang ng uh, mga meetings or mga ayun, or, or lunch or any press con with us, yun lang tayo nagkakaroon ng pagkakataon na makakasama yung Pangulo. And then with the schedule, um, yung usual naman na ano, na ibinibigay sa atin is yung, yung, yung nasa booklet na schedule ng Pangulo. So yun, may, may oras naman doon. Kaya lang walang mga specific information or details na nakalagay doon. Pero ganun, ganun lahat ng uh, foreign coverages naman. Yung talagang booklet lang yung nakukuha ng media delegation. Itong forum niya mamayang gabi, gano'ng kalaki yan? 
gano'ng kalaki at uh, meron bang open forum pagkatapos niya magsalita? Yes, after magbigay ng keynote speech ng Pangulo, merong uh, around 30 minutes na question and answer portion sa kanila sa loob doon sa uh, plenary. Kanina, sinilip natin yung loob kasi bawal pang mag-video. No? Ilingan natin kanina yung magiging pwesto. So malaki yung mismong venue. And uh, ang, nandun na rin yung pangalan ng Pangulo sa, sa harapan mismo. Julie, any update kung meron magkakaroon ng interaction official or unofficial yung mga defense and security officials natin with their Chinese counterparts? Sa nakuha nating schedule ni Secretary Gibo Teodoro, uh, wala, wala so far, wala pa with the, ano, with the Chinese officials. Ano, ang nakita natin hmm. ngayon, bilateral meeting sa kay Canada Minister of Defense Bill Blair, Minister of Defense ng New Zealand, ng South Korea at uh, ng Singapore. Hmm. Okay, thank okay. you. Maraming salamat, Julie Baisa. Salamat, Julie. Thank you, Julie. That was our mobile journalist, Julie Baisa, reporting live from Singapore for the Shangri-La Dialogue. Hmm. I guess ang aabangan doon, Ronald, ano, is whether there will be a shift or a reiteration of the president's policy towards China yeah, in the West. Especially Asia. nasa Singapore siya. Yeah. Na may kaunting... Uh, Policy differences. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Parang iba, iba, ibang yeah. sentiment on the ground yes. here in Singapore. Because you, you were mentioning that uh, um, there's going to be a Chinese presence in that forum. Yes. As always, as always. Yes, everybody's, as always. Uh, everybody's there. Yeah. And, uh, but it's strange that... It's we're, going to be significant. It's, it's strange that there's... there's uh, we've been asking if there's going to be some bilateral meetings between our defense secretary and the Chinese uh, counterpart. Pero parang wala, no? Wala. Because uh, this could have been an opportunity para mag-usap-usap? Yes. Pero yung opportunity ay depende rin kasi kung meron tayong iniisip na mga changes. Mm -hmm. Siguro, dahil wala namang iniisip na changes. So, so ano that's pag, a sign. It's a that's sign. A, that's it's a, a clear sign, sign na, na uh, walang, nothing will change in, in, yeah. the, in, the, in, uh, in the statement of the president. It's yeah. a sign. Okay. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, now it's time to go to your headlines, uh, Ami. What do, <laughs> what do we have? Uh, on the Philippine Star for tomorrow? Well, dahil iniintay pa nga natin yung speech ni Bongbong, ni President Marcos, which will come come out tonight pa, ah, nakafocus tayo ngayon sa US, si, yung conviction ni Donald Trump, saka, yun nga, binati niya si VP Sara ng happy birthday. Si VP Sara pa rin ang caretaker, ha? Mm -hmm. uh, although hindi siya nagpunta dun sa send-off ngayon. <laughs> Tapos, meron tayong low pressure area uh, kung papasok ngayon sa Philippine area of responsibility mag-intensify, magiging batchoy. Yan. Yan ang mga binabantayan natin ngayon. Oh, alam mo, At saka si Senator Risa Ontiveros, inulit niya na wala naman daw sinophobia dyan sa kanyang ongoing investigation on Bamban Mayor Alex, uh, Alice Go. Okay. Alam mo, Ronald, it's very... Ronald, I mean, you know, it's very uh, telling that a simple birthday greeting mm. is a story. Yes. <laughs> no, here we are in yes. media. No, talaga, we're watching every word or everything that is said <laughs> between the president and the vice president. <laughs> and not unfairly, no? Hindi naman unfair na talagang binabantayan natin yung mga story ganyan. Na nagiging balita oh, yeah, yung mga no? ganyan. Yes. Happy birthday. Lalo na, ito yung first time na umalis yung presidente na hindi inappoint yung vice president as caretaker. So, uh, well, in a point daw, pero hindi siya, <laughs> wala <laughs> siya doon sa send-off. Ah, okay. Okay. Hmm. Buti naman. <laughs> okay. But um, we, we actually have uh, a program here on 1PH one, one yeah. uh, of Senator Amy Marcos. Yeah. Okay. Uh, her guest for this week's episode na lumabas ata last, last weekend, ano? was uh, VP Sara Duterte. Alam, alam naman natin mm. na very close yung dalawa na sa Senator Amy Marcos mm. at saka si VP Sara Duterte. And they had some fun, fun and games. Ano? May kukwento lang ako sa inyo. No? Mm -hmm. They had some fun and games. And then at one point, the host of the program, mga parang these this, uh, artistas who were hosting the program, had a, like a game question. Tinanong si VP Sara, si, uh, sino sa kanila ni Senator Amy ang ano ang moody or uh, sumpungin mm. i don't know kung meron ba tayo direct meron ba tayong sound bite <laughs> if you can play it or so we'll play it huh. and uh, I, i'll leave it to you to divine the meaning in this statement so can, yeah. can can we have it now 
Sino po ba ang ano, masupungin sa inyo, mas moody po? Moody. Ako maintak mm. ulo. Mas madali yung binit ng ulo. Present. Wala na. Ay, wala na. Manit ka ni. Oh, Babaeng na. bato. Ano ba yan? Wala lang feeling. Manit na ako. So, Ganun. wala. Last year. Oh, Starting okay. last year. Eh, before last year, normal ka pa. Oo. Oh, oh. Anyari. Anyari last year na nagkaganyan ka. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Ayun. Tatanungin po ba namin yung Oh, magde-next question na po kami. Eh, oh, question. Para naka- okay, next question. Nakalcified na yung nerves. <laughs> Public <laughs> naman yung buhay ko eh. Balikan nyo lang yung mga ano. Mga pangyayari. Mga pangyayari. Okay, so... Calcified. Sorry? Huh? Calcified. Calcified. That's the word of Senator Amy <laughs> yeah. Marcus. Pero ang word, ang, ang word ni ano, ang word ni VP Sara is manhid na. Manhid na. Oh, manhid. Oh, oh. Hmm. Oh, of course, it can mean anything, ano? Yes. But when she said na balikan na lang nyo yung mga pangyayari, public naman yung buhay ko. Oh. Di naman ano pinanggit ba yung nangyari yung, last year? Di naman niya pinanggit yung tambalos-los, eh. Eh, hindi, wala siya pinanggit. Hindi, except that simula last year. She was referring to events that happened since last year. Yeah. Lord. Mm. And the only event we know yeah, is like uh, this this uh, worsening feud between at least our family mm. and, and the, the administration. Saka yung Lord. confidential funds niya, yun yung hype yeah, naman. No. Because that was the budget, budgeting yeah. deliberations. Yeah. Diba? Oh. Di naman na dinay- we actually birthday. run that story on, on that interview. <laughs> yeah. Wala namang denial na ano, <laughs> manhid na siya sa mga criticism. <laughs> yun. Tsaka sa, ano, tsaka it's very telling, ano, kasi the, the Sarah we remember, at least from her mayor days, yeah. is somebody who just, you know, who threw punches. <laughs> at least, yes. At one, one occasion, at least, <laughs> who threw a punch. <laughs> diba? And in the early days of this administration, uh, you know, when, sh- when, when, alam naman, yung tinanggal si, yeah. si Congresswoman Gloria Arroyo, who is an oh. ally yeah. from a uh, House mm. leadership, leadership position, Uh, ang ang sumagkagad si VP Sara with yes, with the Tambalos-los moment. Oh. Oh. So so oh. early early on we we see a VP Sara Duterte is very ano parang subdued. Uh, <laughs> hindi subdued ang tawag doon, ano ba to? Uh, reactive. Palaban. Reactive. I, I mean I mean Palaban siya interview. noon. Oh. Oh. Ngayon oh. We, we see more yeah. somebody is more subdued, restrained. Oh. Yeah. Parang ganoon, man, man hid in her words, ganoon. From a political point of view, Ronald, it does not make good strategy. Well, baka ang kanilang strategy ngayon, less talk, less, less mistake. Mm-hmm. Lalo na, very intense yung mga banat ni Presidente Bongbong mm-hmm. dun sa mga blatant destabilization. At least, nitong past two weeks, four speeches niya ang tema destabilization. So, eh, syempre, isa lang naman yung pinapatamaan nun nung destabilization na yan. Mm-hmm. Na very public din naman yung banat. So, kung ako yung Vice President, Tatahimik na muna ako. <laughs> diba? It's the prudent thing to do yes. right now. Yes. Tatahimik muna. Mm. Nagulat nga ako eh. Na, ba? Halos lahat ng speech ni BBM, ni President Bongbong, merong destabilization na tira. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But that, it's not necessarily yeah. directed at her. Uh, maybe her family. Maybe, no? Yeah. Kasi yun know, naman yung vocal, yung tatay yes. niya at mga kapatid niya. No? Yeah. Pero at the same time, uh, I, I guess, is she, is she caught in between? Uh, is this what exactly. she's telling us by her exactly. restraint? Dahil, dahil hindi lang niya to kapamilya, mga aliado niya to eh. Mm-hmm. So, the prudent thing to do ay medyo kung kailan muna, subdued. Subdued ka muna. <laughs> I wonder if you, Ami, if you notice, if you, if you agree that this is a prudent thing for the Vice President to do at this point. I Maybe think for to good siya, no? no choice naman siya. Mm-hmm. I think she got so used to wielding power during her father's time at napakatagal noon na nagkahalininan sila as mayor of Davao and then naging presidente. Kaya noon sa Davao, nanonuntok siya na sheriff. <laughs> um, ano, pag nasanay ka sa ganun eh, you will carry it over. Kaya lang suddenly, siguro sa umpisa, akala niya kapartner niya to, unit team to eh. And then suddenly, biglang may umalma. Nakita niya, ang lakas ng pushback. Mm-hmm. di ba And so, uh, ano pang magagawa niya? But you have to give it to her that she knows how to Respond. to withdraw. To, to, uh, oh, mm-hmm. marunong siya, marunong siya umurong. Mm-hmm. And ano, hindi pa rin niya binibitawan yung very high profile cabinet post niya. Nakikita naman natin sa mga survey, it's frontline number one sa approval rating dahil I think ang iniisip ng mga tao, the department itself and the teachers, yun ang iniisip nila eh. 
napang high profile niya no? although she didn't get of course the defense portfolio mm-hmm. pero front line niya eh. so you're correct it's the prudent thing to do although sabi ko nga ano pa ba naman ang choice niya nung umalma siya kay GMA nakita niya hindi lang siya tinamaan di ba well, everybody and, around her na ano eh na and, naapektuhan eh and Ronald no? I mean hmm. if you go by the performance or satisfaction ratings Of, wow, wow, wow. Not just the president, but also yeah. of the vice president. Medyo t- tinatamaan sila. Tinatamaan din siya. Yes. Ito, uh, especially itong huling mm. rating na double digit. So, medyo dramatic itong huli. Mm-hmm. No? Kaya baka, so, it's, it's telling her something. Yeah. Baka nag-recalibrate sila. Mm-hmm. Pinag-aaralan nila how to adjust. Mm-hmm. No? At uh, habang ginagawa yon ay tumahimik muna. Oo. Silence is always a good option or a strategy, right? For some. For some. <laughs> in this situation, Sakura. In this situation. Uh, diba? Uh, keep, some, keep them guessing. That, that could be a strategy. <laughs> diba? Yeah. Okay, we have a guest now. Uh, uh, but this time we will be talking about the elections in the United... Uh, well, the coming elections in the United States. But yeah. before they have that election, eh, there's a development where... Donald Trump has been um, convicted, convicted mm. uh, for I know for giving hush money yes. to a porn star being linked to her. Um, let's ask the legal implications or the explanations from a legal point of view. We have Attorney Buco de la Cruz on the line joining Storycon. Attorney. Good afternoon, Attorney. Hi, Attorney. Magandang hapon po, Mami, Sir Patrick, and Ronald. Okay. Hi. First question, Attorney. Um, help us appreciate the process in the U.S. The judicial process may sentencing, may 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 decision na yun jury ang hinihintay na lang yun sentencia ng judge. Uh, yes, um, pwede pa rin siyang tumakbo bilang presidente kahit convicted na siya, no? Uh, the U.S. Constitution lays out just three requirements eh, for presidential candidates. Mm-hmm. Very minimal. Uh, mm-hmm. lang, natural born citizen, kailangan at least 35 years old, and kailangan lang resident for at least 14 years no, sa U.S. Si... So kahit na convicted ka, pwede kang tumakbo. So... At dito sa kasong ito, hindi pa naman final yung conviction kasi eh, may appeal pa rin siya. No? So attorney, si Mayor Guo, hindi pwede tumakbo. Uh, pwede pa rin kasi wala pa naman siyang uh, disqualification. Mm, yun. <laughs> uh, uh, attorney, no, when you say pwede pa rin tumakbo si Donald Trump uh, while the case is on appeal, that's what you're telling us. But not when the conviction is already final? No, I'm saying kahit maging final ang kahit conviction, final. Yeah. pwede pa rin. Oh. Mm-hmm. At what point can he not run? Um, well, may mga, may, may, may mga implications, no? Uh, for example, kung ang sentensya sa kanya ay makukulong siya. Okay. Yeah, no? um, maaaring ipasok yung isang disqualification sa kanilang uh, constitution na hindi ka maaaring patakbuhin kung ikaw ay incarcerated for crimes like sedition or crimes against the state. Ang problema, wala pero, pa itong implementing law. Okay, but that's pero, not, Tony, that's not his conviction, Attorney. Pero, Tony, tumatungan ng totoong felony that's na sinacharge ka niya, mm-hmm. pwede siya, di ba? Kahit, kahit yes, meron pa rin, pwede sentence pwede pa na, uh, pwede pa rin siya, actually. Ang tanong ko, halimbawang na-convict nga siya at merong, ano, merong ganong klaseng sentence siya, can he continue serving as president? Halimbawang um, ma-elect siya pala. Ma-elect na hindi pa nga yun final yung ano, tapos ang naging sentensya niya, imprisonment, anong, anong magiging, anong kalalabasan mo? Pwede ba niyang ipardon ang sarili niya, attorney? No, she, she oh, cannot. Yun, yun she ang cannot. magandang question doon. No? Mm. Um, mm. Kung siya ay makonvict at may sentensyang pagkakulong mm. at siya ay maging presidente, uh, may spoon of thought na nagsasabing pwede siyang magpatawad, magpardon ng kanyang sarili. sarili. <laughs> Kasi wala namang pagbabawal sa ilalim ng kanilang constitution. Except that may mga jurisprudence sa US Supreme mm. Court na nagsasabing ang presidential pardon applies only to federal offenses. Yes. 
Eh, itong uh, parusa sa kanya ay kaso sa isang state, state court. Oh, so, state level lang. So, wala pang hmm. desisyon ng Korte Suprema ng Amerika na pinapayagan ang pardon sa mga offenses sa state level. Hmm. Halimbawa, attorney, siya ay masentensyahan sa July 11 mm -hmm. ng four years. Mm -hmm. uh, maximum, let's oh, say. Imprisonment. So, give him the maximum. So, tapos sa November, paano siya kakampanya pag siya ay nakakulong? Theoretically, ah? Uh, kahit mayroon ng uh, sentensya sa July 11, mm -hmm. hindi pa rin siya makukulong kasi may appeal process pa ito. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, pero, hindi pa rin final, pero theoretically, hindi pa rin makukulong eh, hanggang matapos ang halalan. Yes. Uh, alam mo, theoretically, matapos yung appeal process before the election. Theoretically, uh, pwede ba yun okay. na nakakulong ka tapos ikaw ay tumatakbo as president? Um, yes, meron na nangyaring ganyang halimbawa. No? Hmm. Noong 1920 presidential campaign, merong isang uh, socialist leader, si Eugene Debs. Eugene na nakonvict at nakakulong sa isang federal prison sa Atlanta, uh, 10 years yung sentensya niya, pinayagan siyang makakampanya no? kahit siya ay nasa loob ng kulungan. Parang trillanes lang. <laughs> Remember? Oh. <laughs> ba to? Uh, parang ano, parang dati si Ninoy Aquino. Oh, yeah. Right, right. Oh, oh. Hmm. Pero I think uh, the difference is hindi walang conviction sa mga detention na yun. Hmm. Like, uh, yeah. Correct, correct, Aquino. correct. Yeah. correct. Okay, so uh, attorney, this is not the kind of conviction that is really going to knock out Trump from the election. So, um, so if we can hazard a political guess on what the implications or what the objective of this conviction is, uh, what wh what is it, no, attorney? I think it's more of uh, media mileage, a matter of changing perceptions. Mm -hmm especially among Republicans na supporters ni Trump. Kasi may mga polls at surveys na nagsasabing hindi nila iboboto si Trump kahit Republican sila kung ito ay convicted felon. Okay. Meron pa siyang tatlong kaso, attorney, di ba? Uh, isang subversion case. Three cases. Isang election interference case. At isa yung mga classified document case. Uh, kamusta yung mga kaso na yun? Um, yung dalawa doon kasi ay uh, suspended ang trial dahil ina-await yung mga legal questions na itinayo ni Trump na nasa Court of Appeals. Yung immunity, yung presidential case, immunity. Uh, hmm. Correct, correct. So hinihintay nila na ma-resolve mo na yon ang Court of Appeals. Pero yung isang kaso niya, uh, mukhang, mukhang aandar na rin. No? Mukhang magkakaroon na rin ng uh, trial at magkakaroon na rin ng uh, conviction or acquittal during the campaign. Okay, attorney, you mentioned a while ago, no, na one possible uh, political implication in this is that Republicans may opt not to vote for somebody who's been convicted of felony. Uh, but could it also be the other way around? Because we're hearing from some people that uh, the other view is that, that this conviction has, in fact, strengthened or delivered the elections already to Trump. Parang sympathy vote naman ang ano nila dito, ang reading nila. Could it work both ways? Uh, yes, that, that's a good point. Kasi dahil uh, ang strategy ni Trump mula noon hanggang ngayon is drumming up the base. Meaning, ang, ang kampanya niya ay nakatarget lamang talaga sa mga alam niyang butante nila. At uh, ang style niya ay nagpapaawa sa kanyang mga butante at ipinapakita na siya ay biktima ng persecution or political vendetta sa mga Democrats. So, maaari ngang magkaroon ng backlash at lalong tumibay ang suporta ng mga Republicans kay Trump. Okay, Ronald, ikaw. At ano tingin mo? There are two possibilities. Attorney, he was con yeah. ang Attorney, he was convicted kasi... on 36 counts, no? 36 counts, 34. maximum 4 years. Yeah. Pero actually, ang mga hanggang maximum niyan, mga 20 years lang, paano kung maibigay sa kanyang sentensya maximum, anong options niya if he is elected as president? Yeah, unang-una, uh, class C e, misdemeanor hmm. ang mga offenses na ito. Kaya kahit yes. na 34 counts sa classification ng uh, U.S. criminal statutes, ito ay mababaw na krimen. Hmm. And uh, based on the sentencing guidelines, 
kung first time offender ka at lalo na kung ikaw ay old age hmm. na malabong patawan ng parusang pagkakulong maximum so, but hmm. assuming assuming na may sentensya ng incarceration or imprisonment uh, hindi ito lalagpas ng 4 years <coughs> Yun yes. kasi ang maximum sa sentencing guidelines for yeah. Class E felonies or yung misdemeanors. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I had a question a while ago, yeah. Ronald. Tanong, yes. sa, tanong, tanong mo, Patrick. No? Una ay yung latag kasi, lamang si Trump na mga 6 to 8 points kay Biden. In most Based on surveys. May, hmm. In most surveys. Hmm. No? So medyo significant yung lamang. Uh, pero itong uh, conviction na ito, to some niches, to some mm -hmm. sectors, magkakaroon ng pagbabago. Alimbawa, yung sinabi ni Atty. Merong, merong uh, maliit, maliit na section ng Republicans ay pwede magbago yung position nila pag convicted. Ibig sabihin, naniniwala sila sa justice system okay. ng Amerika kahit sila ay Trump. Oh, oh. No? They don't want uh, a felon, a convicted felon. <laughs> yes. Alimbawa, <laughs> to, yung banat ni uh, Trump after ng conviction niya, binanatan niya yung justice system okay. ng U.S., for some, medyo kanyon, uh, gray area. Baka magalit yung iba. Yung kanyang base, yung kanya na, eh, magra-rally yan. No? Yung kanya na. Pero ang target mo kasi ay yung swing. Eh. Okay. Diba? Ang target mo yung mga uh, urban at saka the soft, urban. The, the soft votes. Yes, yun that, could, that, that you could lose. Kung yes. baka ganon. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yun yung, uh, lalo na, pag binanata mo yung justice system ng uh, iyong bansa, at the same time, gagamitin mo yung justice system para mag-appeal. Baka magkaroon ng contradiction dun sa swing votes na yun. Okay. Uh, bagamat significant yung lamang niya kay Biden. So, so it's gonna next hard... survey, makikita natin yan. Yes. So it's gonna harden the core Trump supporters. Yes. Okay? Mag Ito magre-rally. Yes. Pero he could lose the soft votes. The, yes, the swing votes. Okay. Okay, attorney, um, I wonder if you want uh, to jump into that uh, analysis. Um, yes, I agree. Actually, uh, the swing votes always made uh, the votes uh, to to to, or to make a candidate win in the U.S. presidential elections. No, lalo na kung dikit ang laban, yung swing votes, yung mga fence sitters, yung mga hindi active na demo Democrat or Republican, sila yung target na makuha ng parehong grupo. At uh, this conviction might work against Trump for the fence sitters. Okay, thank you for joining the StoryCon. Uh, lawyer, you. Attorney Buco de la Cruz. Thank Marami you, salamat Attorney. Po. Thank, thank you, you for Attorney. having me. Marami salamat po. Yes, also joining us is Richard Haydarian, geopolitical analyst and our host in one, in one uses uh, long conversations. Richard! Okay, we're still Pleasure. talking about Michael, the biggest story. We're still talking about the biggest story in the United States today and also here in the Philippines. Huh? People are talking about the Trump conviction. Your thoughts, Richard? Well, I mean, first of all, I've been trying to listen to different even legal standpoint on this. And it looks like the jur jury is still out in a sense that there are many people who are even doubt whether he'll even serve uh, you know, in a detention center. It's very possible that the judge based on some of his initial statements, acknowledging that we're dealing with the ex-president who could be the future president, we could look at a situation of house arrest, you know, things that we saw in the Philippines, right? When people as powerful as presidents or ex-presidents are facing justice, sometimes incarceration is not necessarily what, what the judge handles. So by, I think, July, we're going to know uh, just five days before Trump's official nomination as a Republican Party's nominee for the presidency. We'll know exactly what the judge is going to hand down, but uh, I think the jury is still out. A lot of legal analysts cannot agree on whether we're going to go in incarceration or not, because statistically speaking, I think based on some studies, they look at 10,000 cases in Manhattan throughout the past uh, 10 years. Uh, vast majority of cases similar to Trump ended up in some sort of detention, probably around a year or lower, but it's very, very likely that he will not serve uh, any term in jail, not to mention there's the appeal option, right, which could kick this uh, can down the road. Where I think this will be very important uh, is that it completely changes the narrative. Because now the narrative is not, you know, who has the better vision for the country. The narrative is whether you trust in America's justice system and whether you're okay with a convicted criminal serving as your president or not. So for a very long time, all sorts of allegations have been thrown at uh, Donald Trump there's always a qualifier, caveat, allege this, allege that. Now, he is a convicted criminal, right, uh, for a felony, at least in this case. And there are other cases that we have to look at. So even if he appeals it and kicks this, the can down the road, 
The question is, will the Biden administration's campaign be uh, aggressive and effective enough to, to convince some of the Republicans and convince uh, some of the independents not to vote for Trump in these elections in spite of their dissatisfaction in Biden. As you know, guys, I've been back and forth to the United States over the past month or so from South Carolina to San Francisco, red states, purple states, Georgia, um, blue states. I talk to people, whether it's Uber drivers, it's professors, it's retirees. The level of enthusiasm for Biden is very, very low. And that's the reason why <laughs> I think the Biden campaign should be very worried when they look at their numbers in battleground states, uh, among others. But now there is an opportunity for the Biden campaign to recast the whole conversation as, do you want a convicted criminal as your president? Despite, we can have a long debate about the framers of the Constitution and how they make it easy for even someone from probably jail to serve as the president of the United States or a convicted criminal. But the, the point is, are you okay with a convicted criminal? as your president or not. And this is important because if you look at Trump's statement after the conviction came out, he was casting doubt and attacking the judge. He was attacking the whole system. So you're going to see essentially Trump on steroids if he comes back to power next, uh, next year. So you may hate Biden. You may think he has been extremely inefficient. You may think he's too old. Maybe, maybe you think he's not handling the inflation well. But you're ready for a vengeance mode Trump, which is exponentially more aggressive and potentially more authoritarian than Trump, uh, first Trump that we saw from 2016. So this is now going to be the narrative that the Biden campaign is going to pump prime. Okay. Uh, there was alleged all yeah. this time. Now it's no longer that case. Richard, before we, pers before we continue, <laughs> we'd like to play uh, a reaction from, President, for, from former President Trump on tape. Can we hear it now? This was a disgrace. This was a rigged trial by a conflicted judge who was corrupt. It's a rigged trial, a disgrace. They wouldn't give us a venue change. We were at 5% or 6% in this district, in this area. This was a rigged, disgraceful trial. The real verdict is going to be November 5th by the people. And they know what happened here, and everybody knows what happened here. You have a Soros-backed DA, and the whole thing, we didn't do a thing wrong. I'm a very innocent man, and it's okay. I'm fighting for our country. I'm fighting for our Constitution. Our whole country is being rigged right now. This was done by the Biden administration in order to wound or hurt an opponent, a political opponent. And I think it's a, just a disgrace. And we'll keep fighting, we'll fight till the end, and we'll win. If we should look at this other than a political move, I'll, I'll throw in that may, contrarian question. Because uh, conviction on, 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 on hush money, yeah. right? I mean, uh, well, dalawa kasi is it anything other than that, a political yeah. move? Dalawa yung importante sa kanina, yung pinakita mo speech ni Trump. No? Una ay... Binabanata niya yung justice system yeah. sa US. Mm -hmm. no, binanata niya yung judge, yung prosecutor, na corrupt daw, etc., etc. Pero hindi niya binanata yung jury. Yung jury kasi ang nag-convict sa kanya. A jury of his peers. Mm -hmm. Yan yung sinasabi sa Amerika. Hindi niya binanata yun. Interesting point there. Dahil kasama yung kanya mga abogado sa pumili ng jury. So hindi niya binabanata yun. Ikalawa, binabanata niya yung location. Mga 5-6% daw sila doon sa lugar na yon. Which means, pinopoliticize niya yung justice system na mahalaga kung nasaan ka kakasuhan. No? Kung ikaw ay nasa Alabama, kung ikaw ay nasa New York, or nasa Florida. Medyo kanyon, uh, delikado yun. Uh, uh, dahil hinahatulan mo na yung, uh, yung sistema sa Amerika na kinakailangan nandun ka dun sa friendly state para ikaw ay hindi makonvict. No? At uh, panghuli, yung tanong mo, it's the... Yung, ito ay aakyat sa maraming level. Eh. Mm -hmm. Kaya nga nung sinasabi ni Richard kanina, yung kanyang analysis, no? uh, tatlong, tatlong categories kasi ito. Yung isa yung legal na pinapaliwanag ni, ni Richard. Yung isa yung political mm -hmm. na nag-touch on din siya. At ikatlo, ito yung hinihintay ng mundo, yung geopolitical. Mm -hmm. Kung sakaling mag-survive siya rito, legally, politically, at manalo siya sa November, yun yung pina pinapanood ng buong mundo ngayon. Especially dito sa region natin. 
magkakaroon ba ng change sa foreign policy? Mm -hmm. Magkakaroon ba ng change sa, alimbawa, uh, sa, sa Europe? Sinasabi ni Trump dati, ng presidente siya, iiwan namin ng NATO kung hindi sila mag scale up sa defense okay. spending. Okay, but uh, is it unfair for Trump to see this conviction as political? Well, sabi ko nga, it's a jury of his peers. Kasama sila sa pumili. Yung jury ang nag-convict sa kanya. Not the judge. Yung judge ang magsisentence. Yung prosecutor, uh, binoboto ang prosecutor sa US, ha? hindi katulad sa atin. Oh, which, which is yeah. political too, yeah. if he's yeah. voted, right? Yes, at yung uh -huh. prosecutor ang nag-raise nung kaso na dapat i-hear uh, sa ganitong klaseng lugar. No? Yun yung, uh, pero maraming appeals level yan. Kaya nga sabi nung ating abogado kanina, medyo tatagal yan. At aakyat pa yan sa dulo, sa Supreme Court, na no, But the decision for this case to go on pero, trial yeah. is up to the prosecutor. Okay, the jury, yes. uh, maybe given another time, maybe, yeah. you know, would probably come up with the same sure. conviction. Yes. In, all, in all probability, he is guilty. Yeah, but, Patrick, yeah. but the it's, timing, it's not the DOJ yes. who handed down the conviction. Yeah. It's the so DOJ involved here. This is a very is independent judiciary involved here. So yes. I think we should not buy into the Trump team. I slightly disagree, actually, with, with Ronald in a sense mm -hmm. that, if I'm not mistaken, the legal team of, of Trump, maybe this is another case. They were trying to argue that his case is being heard in a democratic majority a state is not a valid thing so it's not maybe not there in it, in that press conference per se or maybe not in this case but his legal team has been trying to play that game that if his cases are heard in democratic majority states meaning meaning there's going to be inherently a structural bias against him so his team is doing everything they're they're throwing the kitchen sink everything to question the judicial system can i this Trump will be different from the first Trump. He's angry. There's nothing fun about him. I mean, for some of us who watched him during his first run, he was funny sometimes, of course, sometimes not so funny. But this time, this is a very Richard, angry, Richard, vegetable so, uh, Trump. And that's why... Richard, you're jumping Richard, into the possible consequences or you know, ramification. But uh, what, what I'd like to know, hmm. Richard, is do you think that this case, the prosecutor filing this case, is purely coincidental? There's no political timing involved in it. Well, I mean, we're look at who are the people who are, who are involved here, right? I mean, this case has been going on for quite some time. We're, we're talking about people implicating me, including people who were inside his, uh, inside his team. Uh, I'm talking about his lawyer, for instance, etc. Now, obviously, you can always say that it happened while Biden is in power. But I think it's another thing to say that the Biden administration has been manipulating the entire judicial system. Then you're playing to the conspiratorial game of the Trump administration. That is my argument. But you're right. And as far as optics is concerned, uh, people are going to say there's no coincidence that this case has gone in, 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 this, in this particular direction. It's also possible that the judge taking into consideration the whole politics here may not give him even a detention or kind of incarcerative uh, punishment here and go for something softer in that regard. So let's see also what happens in the coming months. As far as the Supreme Court is concerned, I think things are in, in, in Trump's favor. And maybe it's possible that Trump may not even face a, a hearing at all. Uh, and the case could be dismissed against him as far as the insurrection case is concerned. So the whole American judicial system right now is also on the ballot, right? Yeah. Uh, well, well, you, you, mentioned, you, you mentioned Pero conspiracy. Ako, Richard, uh, ako, isa lang ang tanong ko, Richard. Eh. Is it plus or minus for Trump? Because he has a very solid base. And he is actually saying, I'm going to use this for my campaign. And I think well, the, 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 the base is as solid na, as it na pine, pine persecute daw siya eh. Hindi, the, the base actually, is, the base yung, is yung as solid as it can get. His numbers are right? still high. Yeah, yeah, his numbers are still high. At saka dinadagdag niya ngayon, oh yan, kinonbik ako. Persecuted ako eh. I, I'm, not, I'm just asking you, anong tingin mo? Is it yeah. plus or minus for him na nangyari to? It, it all goes down to soft Republicans, skeptical Republicans, mm. those who voted mm -hmm. for alternative mm. candidates. I mean, I was in South Carolina talking to people who, who had uh, Haley as their favorite. Would these people now shift to Trump or have even more reason not voting for Trump, even though they also mm. don't like the Democrats and all the woke stuff, right? Uh, so that's the question. The base is as solid as it can get. That's why mm. Trump media company suddenly is worth billions of dollars. Well, so I don't think that's the question. The question is, is he going to win over more independence and soft Republican voters? I think uh, it's too early to say. I mean, he has to come up with a very convincing narrative 
to prove to these people that he's really a victim here, that this is a persecution case, right? Pero, can well, I, well, it, well, can I, it's yeah. very important to see uh, how yeah. the Biden administration also approaches this in terms of showing, hey, we're not involved here. This is not a DOJ conspiracy. Well, it's not so this much a conspiracy, conspiracy, Richard, but I think we, we can't ignore the context in which this conviction is happening. As it is, you don't need a conspiracy. America is very polarized at mm. this point. Uh, you don't need uh, a Biden administration guy talking to a judge to... To, to try to draw uh, hidden lines here and there. But the fact is that America, American society is very divided now, and there, there you have it. Uh, Patrick, that, the hush money case was during Trump administration himself, right? I and mean, we've been yes. hearing about this since what, 2016? Exactly, uh, exactly. It's, it's not like it they started in 2020 when Biden became the president, right? The insurrection case, well, everyone saw what happened here. Again, it would be well, ridiculous. I'm, 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 I'm not arguing for conspiracy. There is enough hmm. there to make a conspiracy theory. I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm arguing for conspiracy. Trump. I'm arguing, I'm arguing, um, trying to point out the context in which this conviction has happened, that every American, at least every American, has a strong position when it comes to Trump. Hmm. And, you know, you, you do this conviction at this point in time um, or, or pursue this case at this point in time, it, it's, it's bound to be, how can it not be political? Pero, uh, Patrick, yung political mga, on the part of an yeah, individual, yeah, yeah. not necessarily political on the yung, part of, yung, a, yung hard, of an administration. Yung hard Trump at saka yung hard Democrats, mm -hmm. hindi mo nang mababago yun. Right. Kaya ang, ang, ang target dito ay yung... Binabanggit ni Richard na soft. Mer no? Meron yeah, pa ba yeah, Ronald yeah, yeah, na soft yeah. at this point? Yeah, yeah. Sa Amerika, mm -hmm. meron. No? Uh, at kailangan kasi ipaliwanag ito sa context na hindi bago tong kaso. Maraming kaso even before Trump became president, while he was president, at after siya naging president. Marami sa mga kaso na yan ay uh, na-delay or... Uh, na naitapon sa korte dahil nga magagaling yung mga abogado niya. I'm not trying no? to make a connection between the conviction and the no, administration. No, uh, uh, yeah. Kasi parang hindi naman Pilipinas siya na yes, alam mo yes, na yes. predictable yan. Kung yes. sino na ko po, you can draw hidden yes. lines to, yes. Pero to a court decision. Pero makikita natin yung, yung political context sa context ng iba pang mga kaso niya mm -hmm. na, na nangyari, na hindi natuloy. No? Na, ito yung nag-prosper. Ito yung nag-prosper. At hindi eh, para sa... Ronald, para sa, yun na nga. Hindi ba? Ang dami-daming kaso, Ronald. Hindi maliit na bagay yung falsification of documents. Yeah, yeah we, we, lalo, we know that. Yeah, oh. Lalo na yung nagtestigo pero, ay dati niyang abogado. No? Yun yung, pero Ronald, nga, yun na nga sinasabi ko. Despite all those cases, matagal na lang running tong mga cases na to eh. Ang dami-dami na nang... But look at these numbers. Yeah. Na ino overstate niya si Biden. Ang tagal-tagal na nito na nagpe-percolate tong issue na to. Yes, pero iba But, I mean, iba, you have iba to kasi ani pa conflict con convicted well. felon ka eh. Iba yung convicted hmm. felon ka, iba yung kinakasuhan ka. Iba yung convicted hmm. felon ka. Mismo eh, para Ronald, sa part ng Republicans. No? Ronald, Dahil, yung, yung, if yeah. you look at the uh, primaries, yeah. the participation rate was not very high for Trump. It's true that he defeated the other side. But a significant amount of Republicans were staying it out compared to, uh, to the previous years. No? So there is also a, a number of Republicans also are having an uh, enthusiasm problem with him. That's why you have the rise of Kennedy Jr. and third party candidates. So one thing we didn't talk about at all is how could third party candidates take advantage mm. of this? Because Kennedy can come easily come in here and say, OK, Biden, OK, fine. You know what, what's the deal? Now, this other guy, he's a convicted criminal. I am your alternative. I am the true alternative. So one thing that could happen here is that you may strengthen the third party candidates well, but and create Richard, some significant spoiler RFK effect. is running as a Democrat, uh, uh, Richard. No, no, he's running as an independent. No, he's running as an independent. And the debate right now is, is he going to take away more from Biden or take away more from the Trump side? Initially, the Biden people were more worried about him and there were legal efforts to deny him to be on the ballot in some of the battleground states. But now it looks that the Trump team is more worried that he could steal away from him. And, and I think this conviction could be important in the sense that Kennedy can come in here and say, you want to go for me because I'm really against both of these guys. They're, both of them are establishment. Both of them are con uh, compromised. This guy is even a, an, a proven uh, criminal, right? So so the, this whole game of, oh, Hunter by, by, uh, you know, Biden, oh, what about this? What about that? So that's where I think the third party candidate could actually take advantage of the situation. That's what I'm going to watch out. The last time we had Ralph Nader um, mm -hmm. really spoiling the elections for Democrats, it was just a few percentage points. It's very possible with Kennedy Jr. we can go all the way to double-digit numbers. So this is completely unprecedented territories we're entering right now. I mean, 
If 10 years ago someone told you that a person as a convicted criminal could run and still win, we would say, wow, that's crazy. Now, it's also possible a third-party candidate could get double-digit numbers. That's something also that could be unprecedented and completely change the complexion of this race. Richard, thank you very much for the very spirited conversation and discussion. <laughs> uh, next time, mas maganda kung dito tayo lahat sa studio. <laughs> Including <laughs> Amy. I'm just kidding. No, that was great. Thank you. Sorry, Amy and <laughs> Ronald, if I caught Thank you. Talk to you guys soon. Okay, that was Richard A. Barrian. Uh, geopolitical analyst and uh, 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 a host in Long Conversation. Hindi natin na pag-usapin yung geopolitical. Ayun. Okay. May next time pa. Uh, parating pa yung election eh, in yeah. November. There's a lot of time to talk, that, yeah. to talk about that. Anyway, thanks for joining the StoryCon today. Ami Pamintuan, Editor-in-Chief of the Philippine Star and our resident political pundit, Ronald Yamas. Happy weekend.